Am I the asshole for snapping at a man at the gym? I, 24 female, am 277 pounds currently. I decided to finally get off my ass and start my weight loss journey today. Today was my first time at the gym. Now my membership may be terminated because I kind of lost it on this man. I went to the gym and I decided to do one hour on the bike and then one hour on the treadmill. I had already done my hour on the bike and was walking at a pretty slow speed on the treadmill. I had started at too high of a resistance for the bike, so my knees were already hurting, so I decided to take it easy on the treadmill. While on the treadmill, I was listening to music and completely zoned out, just waiting for my timer to ring at one hour. While I was zoned out and completely dead to the world around me, another gym member came up to me and upped the speed out of nowhere. I was caught off guard by the sudden speed change and I fell. I landed on my arm, not broken, but I did sprain my wrist. When I got up, I yelled at the guy, what the actual F? He looked at me and said that I was going too slow, that I wouldn't be able to lose weight if I didn't go faster. I told him that it was none of his effing business, that I'm new to working out, and if I jump off the deep end, I'll probably hurt myself, making me unable to continue working out. I told him he's not my trainer and to stay in his lane. The staff came to calm me down and told me that he works there as a trainer and was trying to help. But he isn't my trainer. He doesn't get to decide what is best for my workout without knowing me. He could have seriously injured me. But they wouldn't hear it and said I was overreacting and that my outburst is unacceptable. Now the manager is deciding if I could keep my membership or not. Am I the asshole? In all reality, a trainer should know better than to do that to you, and he's an asshole for doing that to you completely. I don't know where he gets off on doing things like that, but putting you in danger is not a morally justifiable thing like that. You fell over, you weren't paying attention, what he did was very dangerous. He's absolutely an asshole for doing that, and the people backing him up are also assholes for enabling that. So I'm gonna go, not the asshole for this one, OP. Now in the comments, Patio Gardener says... Not the asshole. Go back to that gym, file an incident report, and a complaint against that employee. If they don't let you, call their corporate office and file with them. Be sure to stress that you were injured by this man's actions, which he took without even talking to you or getting your attention first. Big time, not the asshole here. But what kind of asshole does that to someone? That's a prank that a 12 year old pulls. Definitely go and complain. There may even be video footage, and I would make sure corporate knows about this as well. So sorry she had to go through that. A criminal who committed assault does that to someone. He literally maliciously injured OP. Especially with cooldowns being a thing. When I was in high school, we were always told about the importance of cooldowns after exercises and not overdoing it. Not the asshole. You should report him. Our next post is by user Fairy Dare, titled, Am I the asshole for refusing to give my parents the peace of mind that my sister will be well cared for when they're gone? I'm 34. Ten years ago, I cut my sister out of my life after she cheated with my then fiancé. It was a two-year-long affair that only came out when I caught them. She was pregnant and pretended that it was the result of a one-night stand. They both knew that I would never forgive them if I found out, and according to my ex, they were hoping that I would love being an aunt, and it would be easier to carry around behind my back if I was busy with the baby. They ended up getting married and having two kids. Then three years ago, my sister was involved in a car wreck, and she suffered life-changing injuries. My parents stepped up to be her full-time carers. She will never be able to take care of herself. About a year later, her husband, slash my ex, died. Their kids went to his parents, while my parents became my sister's legal guardians. A few months ago, they started dropping hints about wanting me to step up after they're gone. Then a month ago, my parents called and asked me to meet them. They said they worry what will happen when they're gone, or even if they're no longer able to care for her in a few years, and I would take over either by putting her in a care facility and making she's cared for, or physically taking care of her myself. I said no. 
that they needed to figure something else out, but I would never do a single thing for her again, and that hadn't changed because she became disabled. They took it okay at first. Then a week ago, when I hadn't called to change my mind, they said I was the asshole for not doing it for them, to give them the peace of mind if nothing else, because even after what she did, she is still their daughter and she can't advocate for herself. Am I the asshole? No, not the asshole. She didn't intentionally get into a car wreck and get herself disabled, but she did intentionally have a two-year affair behind your back and destroy your relationship with your ex. Obviously, he was a part of that too, and he's just as much at fault here. But he died a year ago, and he can't care for her anymore. It's unfortunate that this all happened, but at the end of the day, it's not your responsibility, OP, and I find you morally in the right, not looking after her. Yes, it's a sucky situation you never want to be in, but I don't blame you for not wanting to look after her and following through with not looking after her. Unfortunately, this situation is now on your parents, not the asshole. Now in the comments, Rudadorial says, Not the asshole. Your sister burned down that particular bridge. Exactly. Plus, it's not your job to take care of someone who betrayed you. It's the same as it is for abusive parents who become elderly. No one should expect you to come back into their lives simply because they can no longer look after themselves. I think it's pretty crappy of the parents to put this guilt on OP. Not the asshole, but... Boy, talk about karma though. Disabled people don't deserve their disabilities. Edit, a lot of you are freaking heartless. If someone is drunk driving, they don't deserve to be disabled, they deserve to go to jail. And to the guy who said he knows several people who deserve to get cancer, please go to therapy. Look, generally they do not. Specifically, sometimes they do. E.g., drunk driver has an accident and becomes disabled. I think it's an asshole move to wish harm on anybody, regardless of how much of a crap person they are. And Irons2 says, without the backstory, it would probably be no assholes here, because you're not required to care for siblings. Though I'd have to say that would be the kind thing to do, because we all need help sometimes, slash it takes a village, slash whatever. But with the backstory, not the asshole. She cheated and was never sorry. If she hadn't been in the accident, you wouldn't have ever interacted with her again. If your parents are asking you to make sure she's taken care of in a facility, it sounds like there is money available. They should set up a trust or find a friend if your sister is to have them oversee the situation. You don't need to be dragged in. The sister also has kids and parents-in-law. If the kids are adults when she needs to go to a care home, they may be able to find help. If not, or in addition, the in-laws could step in, as it involves the care of their daughter-in-law, so they're invested in the situation. Unless the grandparents are too old or have passed away, but then the kids may be adults who can help their mum in some way. And our next post is by user NO3007635, titled... Am I the asshole for taking back the money I promised my daughter for her trip after she refused to go watch her younger siblings for the evening? My daughter Zoe, 17, has been planning a trip with her friend for weeks and asked for my wife's and my help with money. I promised her that I'll be paying for her part of the trip, which is around 80 bucks from stuff she needs for the trip, like food and other expenses. Zoe appreciated this a lot, since she normally pays for trips and other fun things with her own money, but she left her summer job not too long ago. Two days ago was my wife and I's wedding anniversary. We planned to go out and celebrate in the evening, and I asked Zoe if she could watch her younger siblings, who were three and nine years old, while we were out. She said, sorry, I have plans for tonight. And I asked her to elaborate and she said that she wanted to meet her best friend at a party before she leaves town as her friend will be moving away this month. She suggested we get a babysitter, but it was already too late for me to call and arrange for a babysitter. My wife suggested calling my sister, but my sister has enough on her plate to be watching our kids. I tried to convince Zoe to skip going out and watch her brothers, but she refused and said my wife and I could stay home and celebrate but I told her we already reserved a table at the restaurant. 
I was getting pissed, and I brought up the trip that I was paying for her, and I told her I'll take the money back if she refused to watch her brothers for the evening. She said no, and I told her no trip then, unless she gets the money herself, because I'm no longer paying for it. She screamed at me, calling me unbelievable for taking money back because she wanted to attend her best friend's goodbye party and not wanting responsibility for her brothers. I refused to discuss it. I took the kids to my mother's house and I left. My wife said I was too harsh on Zoe, especially since it's not her fault that she doesn't want to be responsible for her brothers for the evening. I was puzzled. I told her it's not just one evening. But still, my wife thought I punished Zoe over nothing by taking the money I promised for her trip. Zoe isn't speaking to me and is cold shouldering me because of this. And edit, I just checked the comments and some were asking why I notified her last minute. The answer is because I assumed she'd be home like usual, so I never thought of needing to get a sitter. Well, unfortunately, the answer to this one, OP, is that you assumed and you made an ass out of you and me in this situation. The unfortunate thing is these are your kids, they are your responsibility, they are not Zoe's responsibility, do not parentify Zoe. You're absolutely an asshole if you're going to force her to look after the kids when she wants to go to a going away party for her friends. The morally right thing to do in this situation would be to skip out on the dinner that you've planned, cancel your reservation, and stay home with your kids because you didn't make plans for this. This is not Zoe's fault. She didn't go and maliciously do this, and you're an asshole for taking the money away from her for her trip. Yes, you suck for this. Yes, you're an asshole. Now in the comments, JDP Phoenix says, You're the asshole. Two points. Firstly, if the $80 gift had strings attached, you ought to have made that clear from the onset. Introducing conditions retroactively sets the precedence that your gifts aren't really gifts at all, but tools used to manipulate and control. Secondly, you ought to have provided your daughter with sufficient notice so that she can plan her schedule. What you did shows that you have zero respect for her time and that you expect unquestioning obedience from her. Zero respect and unquestioning obedience. That's OP in a nutshell. Complete asshole. Like to add these points down as well. 2.5, OP gave more respect to his sister and mother, assuming they were busy than his own daughter. Hell, even a paid babysitter Zoe's age would require a heads up to plan accordingly, yet he couldn't even give this same respect to his own daughter? 3, OP had enough time to reserve a table, but didn't plan accordingly to have a babysitter for his son. It is the parent's job to take care of their kids. OP failed at appropriately planning to care for his child. And four, the dinner could easily occur the next day, at the same restaurant, or at least a different one if they couldn't reserve the same one. After all, it's the company that matters when celebrating an anniversary. There is nothing to stop him from doing it the next day. Besides, Zoe's friend only has one goodbye party. OP will have a lifetime of anniversaries ahead of him. Which of these events is actually in control of the family to reschedule? Zero respect and expecting unquestioning obedience. Sums up OP's expectations pretty well. You're the asshole. She suggested that we get a babysitter, but it was already late. So it's too late to call a babysitter, but it's fine not to give your daughter any notice. You're the asshole. Your daughter makes plans like you do and deserves some notice if you want her to babysit. Respect this. And also, OP reserved a table. If he had time to reserve a table, he had time to either get a babysitter or give enough notice to his daughter. Exactly. It was his anniversary. Not like it was a last minute unexpected emergency or something. OP had plenty of time to make plans. Am I the asshole for not paying my boyfriend Uber prices for picking me up from work? So I'm temporarily working somewhere else. It is £20 to get an Uber home. I use the app often enough that I get regular discounts up to 30%. My boyfriend offered to pick me up from work after I told him the price of the Uber sometimes. So he got us home. It's a 30 minute ride, which is around 20 miles. Afterwards, he asked me to pay him. I said, fine, I don't mind paying petrol costs. He said that I'd have to give him £20 because he went out of his way to get me and I would have given it to the Uber driver anyway. He insists that it makes no sense for me not to pay him what I would give to the Uber driver. 
I told him that's different because he's my boyfriend, and an Uber driver is a service. I told him that I'd give him ten pounds, which he wasn't happy about. Am I the asshole for not giving him what I would give for an Uber driver? It's not like I'd pay the price of a Starbucks coffee if my boyfriend made me a cup of coffee. I agree with you on this one, OP. I don't think it's a particularly egregious offense. This is probably one of the first times that he's driven someone like this and he thinks, hey, you know, if you're paying that anyway, I'll just do it for you and, you know, I'll, I'll take the money instead. It's a really ignorant mindset and it's one that you need to punish out of someone by saying, no, that's not how it works, we're in a relationship. How many times do I have to say this to get it through your thick head? This is not a service you're paying for. The right thing to do is cover petrol expenses here, but he's not being paid by the hour to come look after you. That's just something you do for your partner because you're a good person. So I agree with you here, OP. I don't think he's bad. I think he's just ignorant. Not the asshole. Now in the comments, Snossagefest says, Your boyfriend heard you vent about Uber prices, and his takeaway is, Wait, I could be the one to profit here. Do you want a partner who sees you as a source of income? Not the asshole. And OP replies, that's exactly his reasoning. I'm still baffled that he doesn't think it's a dumb thing to ask, given I don't mind paying for petrol. Not the asshole. Honestly, you might as well have taken an Uber if he wants some payment for picking you up. Definitely this. Even if OP does pay him, I wouldn't be surprised if he would still use I go out of my way to pick you up in an argument. If he wants to take money driving so bad, sign up to Uber, dude. Mountain Calendar 102 says, Not the asshole, and consider this a red flag. OP replies, His reasoning was so dumb, because I was willing to pay him the petrol costs because obviously Uber has other costs associated with the final price. He offered to take you home. Red flag. You didn't ask to be picked up. Seriously though, he offered. If she had said, would you mind picking me up from work, I'll pay you, then yeah, he can take the money. But he offered to pick her up and then expected money? She's his partner, not his cash machine. If he wants to get paid for giving people rides, he should become an Uber driver. And back to the top of the post, OP puts an edit and says, I showed him this post and made him read the comments. He apologized, and this isn't something he usually does, and was out of character. Our next post is by user PrudentCoat8988, titled, Am I the asshole for not quitting my job over a colleague's crush? I, 32 female, live with my partner, 44 male, and work in research. My primary colleague, 30 male, and I have worked together for around two years on a major project involving significant intellectual and labor contributions from us both. The project is expected to span at least another two years and is vital to both of our careers. And not long ago, my colleague confessed to me that he is, and has been, infatuated or just in love with me for pretty much the duration. It took place via a long email that was written after an evening of drinking. This was totally unexpected. In retrospect, there may have been some signs, but nothing that wouldn't just as easily be accounted for by a considerate personality. Shortly after this confession, I came to my husband with the issue. I wanted to get his advice about the situation and showed him the drafts, which I had composed to organize my thoughts on the matter. They stated unequivocally that I'm not interested in a romantic relationship and hope these feelings won't complicate our working together. I was again surprised at my husband's reaction. He seemed offended to think I must have invited my colleague's affections and that I should immediately quit my job, as in put in notice tomorrow. I was so taken aback, my immediate reaction was to laugh slash snort at this suggestion, which was probably a mistake. That would be utterly disastrous for my career, and isn't an option I'm willing to consider. I would greatly prefer the entire scenario had never happened, as a difficult and lengthy project hangs in the balance, but I have no real concern at this point about my colleague forcing the issue, or letting it compromise our work. It seemed like an intoxicated getting my feelings off my chest. I'll need to put a lot of thought and caution into how I proceed with the work dynamic, but abandoning our project isn't even on the table. 
About a week has passed, my husband has been altering between irate and the silent treatment and suggested several times that I should move out of the house to be with my new spouse. Today, I swung by the house on my lunch break and found the locks changed and my luggage on the patio. I have been blocked on his work number and cell. Obviously, he cannot possibly intend for me to really move out and is just pulling what I believe to be an assholeish power sulk. But seeing how seriously he's taking this has my doubts up. Maybe I was ultimately too uncompromising when I refused to even entertain quitting my job for the sake of conversation and his feelings, and to shut the idea down so abruptly. Am I the asshole? I was actually on both of your sides for the longest time there because I understand how he's feeling and like, that is ridiculous. It would be extremely upsetting to have your significant other spring this on you from someone they'd been working with for two years. And not everyone reacts to this news the same way. He's obviously taken this in the worst way possible, and it's so extreme that I would say he's an asshole for what he's done. I think there are acceptable actions he could have taken in this circumstance, and the big one for me would have been marriage counselling, obviously, so that you guys can talk this one out and find a nice middle ground together. But he decided to go full scorched earth here. He knows that you have no choice but to continue this project. He knows you. He married you. And now he's the one that is sabotaging this relationship. He is the asshole here, in my opinion. Now in the comments, Past Disaster 7986 says, Quote, obviously he cannot possibly intend for me to really move out. I know it's hard to face, but I suspect he actually does if he's gone to the lengths of changing the locks and packing up all your stuff. If this is how he acts over you refusing to ruin your life over something so minor though, you are probably better off without him. If you do talk to him again, which you absolutely shouldn't, unless it's with police present or through a lawyer, do not leave your job for him no matter what he says. Almost every abusive relationship starts with the man convincing the woman to leave her job. My abusive ex tried it, and thank god I didn't because it was my lifeline. And this behaviour has abuse written all over it. Find a place to stay that he can't possibly know about, and get a lawyer. Change any passwords he would know, especially anything tied to money or credit. Check with a lawyer before doing this with joint accounts though. Keep a charged cell phone on you at all times, make sure a trustworthy person knows where you are, and consider getting some kind of self-defense tool. He may go insane when he realizes you're actually leaving and not begging for him back. Not the asshole, obviously. He's actually in for a rude awakening if he tries to kick her out. His name's not on the house. It is her house that she inherited. He has no stake to it and legally can't evict her. She can evict him, though. He's throwing a tantrum because a co-worker has a crush that clearly is not returned at all, and a good husband would never, ever demand his partner to risk their entire career over this. I'm sure OP knows how to handle her workplace crap, so he needs to cool it. Though OP, I agree with this, you need a lawyer and to take some self-defense classes. Not just because you're tantruming husband, it's a good idea to have the courses anyways. Just in case the crush goes sideways etc, please be careful. Also OP, not the asshole. Your husband needs help desperately though. He's showing signs of abusive behaviour. Not the asshole by a wide margin. Your husband is blaming you for something you have no control over and is overreacting by a lot. You have every reason to take your time to let your colleague down softly because your career is in the balance. Your husband is a huge asshole and you should lawyer up. And not the asshole, this is not your fault. Your colleague was unprofessional and should have kept his mouth shut about his feelings. You're a married woman for Christ's sake. Your husband putting the blame on you and demanding you sabotage your career to soothe his ego is ridiculous and manipulative. Both of the men in this situation have put you in a horrible position, and you have my deepest sympathies. And back to the post, OP leaves two updates and says, Hobby called me. Long story short, he's been extremely anxious each day when I leave for work, and buckled from that pressure today. I'm only quote-unquote welcome back home once I've quit my job, which is obviously still unacceptable. I'm considering taking a week of accrued paid leave, which will hopefully result in an adult conversation with my husband, 
as well as coming to a decision about how to best handle the colleague. That failing, I'm hearing the word lawyer loud and clear through these comments. I'm grateful for all of the support and perspective. And update two, I ended up calling my sister 38 female. Something I avoided initially because I didn't want to stir the pot by involving family members who are already disliked by my husband. I'm currently with her and my cousin, 35 male, who are both supportive. Our plan is to call a locksmith tomorrow to regain access to the property. Husband can ruminate with the friends or at a hotel for the present, for my cousin to collect some important things of mine from the house, and for me to stay with my sister for a few days while I take a hard look at my situation and options. I'm not set on divorce at this point, but I definitely need to reassert some very basic boundaries before exploring further discussion with husband. Thank you strangers on Reddit for helping me emerge from the emotional haze with some clarity. Our next post is by user RangerCat, titled, Am I the asshole for putting a raincoat on my cat? So I'm 17 female. I have a cat who loves to go out in the garden, but absolutely hates getting wet. I live in a very rainy country, and if the cat can't go outside, he gets bored, which turns him into being destructive. I managed to find a raincoat meant for small dogs, but it fits my cat perfectly, so I figured I'd get it out, since he already loves his dress and his Batman fluffy thing, and the raincoat was a massive success. He pretty much asks for it to be put on now so he can go out when it's raining. My sister came to visit the other day, and midway through her visit, the cat wanted out in the rain, so I put on his jacket for him, and he went on his merry way. Sister got mad, and she said putting clothes on a cat, especially one with fur, is cruel, and I'm only doing it for my own enjoyment. She thinks I'm a huge asshole for this and for taking pictures of him in his raincoat. Am I the asshole? Now in the comments, Outrageous Ad says, Not the asshole. As a vet I once worked for said, Cats are honest. If your cat didn't want to wear the coat, he would not, and you would likely have some scratches to show for your efforts. It's true. One of my cats has chronic rhinitis. He patiently allows me to not only use a wet cloth to clean his face, but he also allows me to make a point with it and wipe inside his nostril, and use tweezers to pull off hardened bits. Given his displeasure at the utterly painless claw trimming, I know for a fact that he would not tolerate the nasal and face cleaning if he wasn't okay with it. And not the asshole. Can your sister back her argument up with any evidence? Because you can back yourself up by the simple fact that your cat seems to ask for the raincoat when he wants to go out on a rainy day. And OP replies, He stands at the coat rack and cries until someone goes to put it on him. Even when it's not raining, because it usually starts raining. He stays dry and he gets to play. Our next post is by user Homeless Mom one titled, Am I the asshole for refusing to send my daughter to live with my sister despite being homeless? I'm 22 female. I have a three-year-old daughter and we are homeless. I lost my job and my home at the beginning of the pandemic. I have since found alternative employment. We're not on the streets but are living out of a hotel. The problem for me is coming up with a deposit. Pretty much everywhere requires the first two months rent, the last month and a deposit. That coupled with a grand a month for rent in my area, it is proving difficult to come up with a deposit. My sister keeps offering to take my daughter so that she has a room of her own to stay in, but every single time I have refused. In the hotel, my daughter has a privacy curtain between our beds, so she has visual privacy and she also doesn't want to move in with her aunt. Recently, my parents found out about my sister's offer and are really pissed off I won't accept. They've called child services on me twice, who found no issue with our current situation since it's not illegal to be homeless with a child. My daughter has everything she needs except a back garden to run around in, and child services are just fine with that. My parents still think I should accept my sister's offer to provide my daughter with her own room and think that I'm being a major asshole by not doing so. I don't really think I'm being the asshole here since my daughter also does not want to go. Am I the asshole? Edit to add, my sister wants me to cover all of my daughter's expenses if she goes there. 
Now in the comments, TexNo90 says, Not the asshole. Your daughter doesn't want to go, so why make this any worse for her? Also, if child services have deemed it okay and your daughter has everything she needs other than a garden to run around in, cue a trip down to the local park instead, then it's fine. Out of curiosity, why isn't your sister offering to take you both in? If she has a spare room and she knows you're in a temporary, tough situation financially, I say temporary given that you said you have new employment now, why doesn't she offer you both this spare room at a cheaper rent than a hotel? Until you can save up money to rent somewhere else. If there's no reason not to, then I would say the sister is being the real asshole here, not trying to help both of you out in order to avoid splitting the two of you up. Leafing Blueberry says, OP wrote on another person's comment that the sister thinks it's inhuman for a toddler to share a bed with an adult. That's messed up. What? She's her mother. How? I... I just can't anymore. And future Jake Santiago asks that same question, why isn't your sister offering to house both of you? And OP replies, she only has one spare bedroom, and apparently it's inhumane to force a toddler to share their room. When I had a house, she slept in my bed most nights anyways. Not the asshole. I would be wary that she's trying to take your kid. Honestly, it was my first thought reading OP's post. It's really weird that she's insisting only the baby comes. Yeah, I'm so upset reading this. In just two months, OP could save enough that they could be out of homelessness permanently. And your sister won't do it? OP... Your sister doesn't want you to get out of homelessness. It honestly sounds like she's judging you for it and wants to take your daughter away permanently. If you would let her go stay, she would be using that to try to turn her temporary custody permanent. And you'd have a legal battle and sis refusing to return her. And if you get stable, non-hotel housing, then obviously that interferes with that plan. Our next post is by user StretchNew2164, titled, Am I the asshole for not going to my sister's child-free wedding? I don't want to ruin our relationship by doing this, and I don't want her to be upset over it, but I also don't think I'm being such the asshole. My, 30s male, sister, 30s female, is having her wedding at the tail end of October, and she has decided, understandably, that she doesn't want any children to be at the wedding, which is perfectly fine. This, however, means that I won't be attending. I have three young children, seven, five, and three years old. As you can imagine, it is hard to find a babysitter for them on a normal day, and even if I only went to the reception, it'd be hard to find someone to watch them for such a long time. Plus, I don't want to leave the kids, I would have to buy a tuxedo and drive over three hours to get to the venue, and it just isn't worth it. As you can imagine, considering that I'm posting here, my sister is angry because of it. She thinks I'm being selfish and just using the kids as an excuse not to go. We did get into a big fight about it, and we're both angry about it now. Now in the comments, Tabby Annabelle says, Not the asshole." Here is a perfect case of a bride wanting a child-free wedding, even knowing it might cause her sibling not to be able to attend. I've seen enough times that people say it's your choice to have a child-free wedding, but you have to be understanding when those kids can't attend. OP is a single dad with three young children who would have to be away at least one whole day due to the travel and wedding. Absolutely. If the bride cared so much about her brother being there, she would not be putting obstacles in his way. I had a friend with a child-free wedding, but she also arranged to have trusted babysitters available at a group rate at the hotel for anyone coming from out of town. That's actually an excellent solution. Child care at the hotel. I just told parents kids were welcome to attend, but I didn't have any activities planned for them so they'd be on their own. I had my wedding at an aquarium so everyone got to touch weird animals during the reception regardless of age. Info. Do you have a spouse? And when you say it isn't worth it, is it a financial hardship to go to the wedding or just a big hassle? The wedding is over two months away. If I were your sister, I'd be pretty hurt that you weren't willing to at least try to find a babysitter or make other arrangements. As others have said, you can rent a tux or a suit. You don't need to buy one. 
You're the asshole. You must really not like your sister if you don't think getting a babysitter is worth it to see her getting married. And it does sound like you're using the kids as an excuse not to rent a tux and drive a few hours, considering you mentioned those things here. I am so glad I grew up in a family where getting a babysitter, driving a couple hours and spending some money on a tire wouldn't prevent me from seeing my siblings getting married. Six hours of driving plus the wedding and reception, plus getting ready. Glad I grew up in a family that knew how to be kind while using critical thinking. Yeah, but that's what makes it sound like it's not about the kids. They just don't care that much about going to their sister's wedding. Lots of people have destination weddings or move away and end up getting married over a day's drive or even a full day plane travel away. I'd still go to any of my siblings' weddings and would expect they would too if it came to that. Imagine telling a single father who stated in the comments that they would have to find a babysitter willing to watch his three young children for 10 plus hours, which mind you, he has tried, is selfish. Imagine telling a single father or three young children who can't be vaccinated yet that he's selfish for not attending a potential COVID super spreader and being okay with that. I'm so happy I grew up in a family that was understanding of others' difficult circumstances that they either tried to accommodate their situation or understood and left them alone. He's got a three-month-old, no spouse, and his normal babysitters are unavailable or not available for the amount of time he needs. And even if the babysitter was available, he's got three kids on one income. Weddings are expensive to attend on their own, let alone when you throw hours of babysitting on top of it on one income. Part of me agreed with you. Family steps up and helps family. But that goes both ways. The sister expects her brother to ditch his kids, one of which will be five to six months old, during a pandemic, and pay for their care, his clothes, their gift, while he's a single dad with three small kids, and she just says, my wedding's child-free. If you don't come, I hate you, and I will in no way help you or meet you halfway. Am I the asshole for not wanting my fiancé's grandmother at our wedding? So my fiancé and I are getting married next month. Everything is going great, but we've been having a serious argument about having his grandmother at our wedding. We've agreed not to have kids at our wedding, as we want the reception to be a huge party for your adult friends and family, with dancing, loud music, and an open bar. However, for precisely the same reasons that we don't want kids there, I don't want his elderly grandmother at our wedding either. I said she can come to the ceremony, but not to the reception. It'll be extremely loud, and I want it to be a party atmosphere, and she will be extremely out of place. For context, none of my grandparents are still alive, and he still has his last living grandmother. This has caused a huge fight, since she said she's always dreamed about being at her grandson's wedding. He's her oldest grandchild, and she probably won't make it to the next family wedding, which is why I said that she's more than welcome at the ceremony, but she will just be too out of place at the reception. She and he both insist that she will be fine and wants to go to the party, but I just know it will inevitably lead to us dealing with her and taking care of her. And I just want to get drunk and let loose with my friends. She's now really upset and won't talk to me, and my fiancé is also angry. I think I'm within my rights to make this request, as I am the bride after all. Am I the asshole? I can see why you don't want her at the wedding, but you also need to look at the whole situation here, have some self-awareness and realize, this isn't what my partner wants, this means a lot to my partner, perhaps I need to make some sacrifices so that my partner can be happy at our wedding. That is as deep as it goes, and you're denying that you are hurting your partner and you are hurting your partner's family, who is about to become your family too. Yes, you're the asshole in this situation, OP. Now in the comments, Essex Catwoman says, You're the asshole. I'm not sure how you could be more the asshole, to be honest. You were hearing the love of your life say this is important. You were hearing someone really important to your partner say this is important. And you're putting getting drunk ahead of that? FFS. She's been a grown adult longer than you've been alive. I'm pretty sure she can handle any tiredness and noise as she wishes. If I was your partner, I'd be noticing the red flags. King Pete 235 says, You're the asshole. She's not a kid anymore, and you won't have to take care of her. 
Honestly, this would be enough for me to call the wedding off. Get over yourself. Imagine living for 98 years and then being told your presence would ruin a party. My god, the woman has seen 98 years worth of parties. But this one wedding is going to be too intense for her? Get over yourself, indeed. Also, as a chronically ill person, if great grandma is so fragile that she can't stand drunk people, loud people, or loud music, then she'll make a quiet exit after a couple of hours anyway, as will a lot of older crowd who aren't up for extended drunken shenanigans. Exactly. I presume they're not going to start the reception wasted. <laughs> With this bride, I'd say you presume too much. And Chicky Tendy says, you're the asshole. Dude, I understand kids because it's not a good environment for them, but let the grandmother come. She's a grown-ass woman and knows weddings are a party. Make sure somebody is there to help her with anything she needs and to make sure it's not your responsibility. That is literally how simple it is. My assumption for the main reason not wanting kids was because they run around and are a nuisance. I can't imagine 98-year-old granny will be doing that, and I can't imagine there being many people who won't want to help her if needed. We didn't allow kids at our wedding because our family is full of heavy drinkers with filthy minds and mouths. Not a place for children at all. My grandma was probably the person having the most fun. I can't imagine not inviting elders because I want to drink, acting like they haven't had a day of fun in their life. Our next post is by user Beginning Staff 7654 titled, Am I the asshole for telling my kids why we're getting a divorce? Alright, this is messy. Me and my ex-wife got married at 23 and had three kids. The three kids are 17, 15, and 14. I recently found out my ex-wife has been cheating on me for three years. Once I confronted her, she broke down, saying that I was never home, always working. By the way, I worked like that so she could be a stay-at-home mom. I raised my kids to know that cheating is one of the worst things in the world. If you no longer love someone, break up with them. Don't cheat. Even if you have issues with the relationship, work it out or leave them. Now, before we sat them down, their mother begged me not to tell them she cheated. I told her that if they asked, I would not lie. She tried to dance around the whole reason for the divorce, citing adult issues. 14-year-old asked why we were getting a divorce, and I told him flat out, she cheated on me for three years. The mother immediately burst out crying, and all the kids were incredibly angry with her. It's been three months and they still haven't spoken to her, saying that she ruined the family and their lives, and that she's a cheater and a liar. She's been coming after me online, saying that I'm an idiot and ruined her relationship with her kids. Am I the asshole? I mean, parental alienation is definitely a thing with this, but she's the only one alienating herself from her kids in this situation, and she's trying to cover that up and not have it look like it's her fault. Or at least, let this news come in steadily and not all at once. I imagine this isn't the best way to handle this situation. This is certainly a way to handle the situation. And morally, you're not wrong for doing so. It's just that this is really intense. This is the kind of stuff that will just completely break someone's trust in their own parent. And I don't know if this will have lasting impact on the kids. And I don't know if that is morally correct or not to just drop that bomb. But hey, the truth has to come out some point and in some way, and it's best not to drag these things on with continuous smoke and mirrors and lies. So I'm going to say not the asshole for this one. I feel like it was necessary. Now in the comments, Infamous Wasabi says, Not the asshole. I'm a child of divorce. I would have rather known the truth at the time that my parents split than to learn it a few years later. Your wife cheated. That is a fact. She wanted to conceal that fact. That is an unrealistic expectation. Bad news is not a fine wine. It does not improve with age. Her relationship with the children took a back seat to her infidelity the moment she cheated. You owe her nothing, especially lying to protect her. Absolutely this. I still don't know what split up my parents 30 years ago. Not the asshole. If it makes you feel any better, I didn't want to tell my kids I was living in a dead bedroom before my divorce, and my ex-wife made it feel like I was the strange one because I liked kissing and having a physical relationship, 
and thought that I should just accept it. I'm still not sure how you'd tell them that when my oldest was 12 at the time. I think there is age-appropriate ways to have that conversation. I don't know. Maybe at 12 it's fair to say that you both grew apart? It's not a lie, even if it's not revealing the whole truth. Then, if it ever comes up as adults, then maybe it's appropriate to have a discussion that you guys just weren't romantically compatible and didn't agree on how to express affection. As awkward as it is, it's still healthy for your kids, as they're older, to understand they shouldn't have to compromise or change who they are for a significant other. TexNo90 says, She's been coming after me online saying that I'm an idiot and ruined her relationship with her kids. Oh my god, the nerve of that woman! She ruined her relationship with them when she decided to cheat on you. 100% not the asshole. And thank you for being honest with your kids and treating them like adults and not trying to sugarcoat it. They deserve honesty and transparency in this situation too. Putting your personal mess online is so high school. I don't need to read that crap from my friends. It's not my business. Don't get me involved. Plus, she's putting the stuff out there for OP, or one of the kids to reply to, and then everyone knows she cheated. Whenever my friends degrade into sharing their dirty laundry online, I always feel so damn embarrassed for them. But I don't look away from the dumpster fire. <laughs> so true. And you didn't ruin anything. She did by cheating. I was the kid in this scenario before. Not once did I think that it was my dad's fault for ruining my relationship with her for telling the truth, nor did the slandering from her help. Stand by your kids close. They'll need it too during this. Even consider family therapy. Not the asshole. Our next post is by user throwaway 564554 titled... Am I the asshole for faking fainting at my mom's house after my husband attempted to announce my pregnancy? Background. I, female 32, very recently lost my 8-year-old nephew to cancer, leukemia, that he suffered from for months. His parents, my brother and his wife, are absolutely devastated. He is their only son and the family's only grandchild. I married my husband, male 29, three years ago, and we've always wanted and planned to have kids, but we've endured financial and medical hardship, one of them being that my husband had a serious injury that cost him an eye. His other eye can't function properly without assistance. He loves my family, and my family love him, but he can act out sometimes for no reason. This happened two weeks ago. After my nephew's funeral, my mum invited everyone to dinner to honour him. Knowing the occasion, I predicted there'd be potential sad moments and a lot of silence. I took a pregnancy test days prior and told my husband I was pregnant. He got so excited and was already going online to tell everyone. Even said he was going on Facebook to announce it, but I asked him to keep it quiet and not mention it during the family dinner, and he said he could do that. We arrived to mum's house and my brother and his wife were there. They brought pictures of my nephew for us to look at. Some of the family were already in tears till dinner was ready. My brother and his wife were telling stories about my nephew that everyone was affected by. My husband kept giving me signals from under the table, saying that we should announce that we're expecting to lighten up the mood. I warned him multiple times, as he said he'll do it if I won't. He stood up and was about to open his mouth when I quickly pretended to faint and fell back in my chair. My husband and the others freaked out and stood up. My husband kept shaking me while mum splashed water over me. I sat up in the chair and acted like I was fine afterwards, and I then asked my husband to take me home, and he grabbed my stuff and helped me walk. My mum then asked me to call if I felt better. My husband was really buying it until I made sure we were out, then I let go of him and started walking casually. He stood there asking, what the actual F? I told him I just faked fainting to stop him from making a mistake and announcing my pregnancy during dinner. He got mad and rushed back to ring my mum's door, but I stopped him in time. I had him get in the car and he lost it, calling me ridiculous and complaining about how I played him and ruined this opportunity for him. I called him crazy to think the dinner mum held for my recently departed nephew was an opportunity. 
I told him I care about maintaining a decent relationship with my brother, and I won't let an announcement ruin it. I also said that my family needs my support. Not happy news that's supposed to do what? Is it supposed to magically make the pain go away? He argued that we can't hide it forever, and said that I shouldn't hide the news like it's something to be ashamed of. He was and is still extremely upset that I lied to him and I did this, and he keeps saying that I shouldn't have made a scene like that. Am I the asshole? Edit, I don't know if this is relevant, but after what happened, he's been calling my morning sickness fake. He says he's not a fool to fall for the same tricks, and I kind of understand why he would have trouble believing what I say and do from now on. If he's being serious about that, and that's just not an ironic extended joke, that is seriously concerning. He was already pushing the boundaries at that dinner, and you had to embarrass yourself and make a scene and embarrass him to get him to not do that, when he shouldn't have ever put himself or you in the situation to be announcing the pregnancy there. That's so stupid that he would ever do that. And if he is serious about ignoring your morning sickness and not helping you and calling it fake, that is grounds to start some serious discussions about the future of this relationship. Because if he's not going to treat this seriously and take you seriously, what point is there to this relationship? It's all benefit to him, it's all negative for you. That seems to be the way that it's going currently. You're not the asshole for your actions in this situation, you're trying to salvage the situation and steer the ship back on course. He is derailing things because he's not getting his way. He's an asshole for doing that, and there is no justifying his actions here. Now in the comments, not the asshole. He got mad and rushed back to ring my mum's door. I mean, is he okay? Who does that? Also, ruined this opportunity for him? His little nephew's funeral was an opportunity. I mean, really? Really? I get people are going to say that you could have talked to him. It sounds like you did and he didn't listen and was never going to. You know him and I don't, but I have to say, he sounds like he has issues. And OP replies, Yeah, I kid you not, he really did. I'm guessing he was upset after he found out I wasn't really sick and wanted to go back to tell my mum? I'm not sure why he wanted to return inside my mum's house, but I sure did talk to him even before we got there as I stated in my post, but I don't know why he still attempted to make the announcement. Jesus, he sounds like a complete asshole. Is he normally like this? I guess it could be just that he's so excited about the baby, but this is ridiculous and completely insensitive. Time and place, man. You don't hijack someone else's or another event to announce your own news. It's one thing if it's a happy event like a wedding, but when it's a sad thing, like a recent death, you don't get to decide, hey, I bet this will cheer everyone up. Let people mourn. Bring everyone together of your doing to announce your own news. And no, not at a wedding either. Unless the bride herself is announcing that she's pregnant, it is a massive asshole move to announce a pregnancy or engagement at someone else's wedding. Info. When your husband lost his eye, did he also suffer a traumatic brain injury? Because his inability to read a room or control his impulses are extremely concerning. Does he often lose his temper or disregard your feelings like that? His behavior makes him the asshole, but I'm wondering if it's due to something deeper. Also my first thought. OP thinking that the matter was settled by them talking before the event and the extreme impulse control issues suggested by OP's post suggests to me that this is not normal established behavior. The impulse control and fixation issues definitely suggest traumatic brain injury to me too. Also OP, if this is new or exaggerated behavior, I'd suggest trying to get him a neuro appointment slash evaluation even if he wasn't diagnosed with traumatic brain injury from his previous injury. It can easily be missed, especially when it happens during other trauma. Also, it could be something new or something else, because these types of behaviours are definitely concerning. And our next post is by user ThrowWedDress113, titled, Am I the asshole for demanding my stepdaughter to pay for my daughter's wedding dress that she ruined? I'm a mother of two, my biological daughter, 22, and my stepdaughter, 23. Both girls grew up together, and my husband passed away years ago. 
My stepdaughter has a competitive personality. She's always in a race with my daughter in everything, from single achievements like getting higher grades, to bigger achievements like graduating, earning a car, getting engaged first. My daughter doesn't care about being first or last. Not only is she not the competitive type, but she's also non-confrontational. So I sometimes find it necessary to step in and tell my stepdaughter to stop making her sister feel like she's in a race with her and complaining about stuff my daughter got to do first. My daughter got engaged when her stepsister had already been engaged for eight months. The problem began when my daughter announced her wedding date despite being engaged for just two months. My stepdaughter didn't like that and tried to get ahead and plan her wedding as soon as possible, but couldn't find a venue with a date earlier than my daughter. My stepdaughter tried convincing my daughter to slow down and put off the wedding, but it's impossible since everything has been set. My daughter is getting married at the end of August. She bought a $700 wedding dress that my stepdaughter and I saw. My stepdaughter got mad and had a meltdown and ghosted us for a week, then came to visit while my daughter was staying with me, acting calm and nice. She excused herself to the bathroom when we had dinner, and then came back and said her fiancé was outside and that she needed to leave. It was strange that she left in a hurry. My daughter entered her room and found her wedding dress cut to pieces from below to the waist. We were in dismay. We figured it was my stepdaughter who did this, since she couldn't do anything about the fact my daughter was getting married before her. My daughter broke down, and I confronted my stepdaughter in front of her fiancé, and she denied it and yelled at me. I told her I knew she did it and handed her the bill for the dress that she ruined out of spite and demanded she pay for a new one. Her fiancé picked an argument and got everyone involved after I threatened with court. My stepdaughter then apologized, blaming it on mental issues, but said she can't use the wedding money to pay my daughter $700. They tried talking me into paying, and then they pay me in a matter of months, or asking my daughter to postpone it till after my stepdaughter's wedding. But I didn't accept it, since my daughter will then have to lose more. It's been days, and they're still trying to negotiate. And in case it's relevant, the wedding dress was paid for by me as a gift for my daughter, and because the damage took place at my house, I feel like I should be doing something about it. Yeah. Taking them to small claims court is what you should be doing about it. As Phil Swift would say, that's a lot of damage. I don't know. I don't know why you're asking us if you're the asshole for demanding she pay for the wedding dress. It's obvious that she's the asshole. What do you want me to say? And I don't think that's a reflection on your parenting at all. I think she was just destined to suck because of her attitude. So yeah, you're not the asshole. Now in the comments, Garth Astro says, not the asshole, stand your ground. Your stepdaughter has screwed around, now it's time for her to find out. Stepdaughter needs to learn that actions have consequences. And if I were OP, I'd be discerning her and taking her to court over the dress. I would do the same, but add in that I decline to go to her wedding and possibly let gossipy Aunt Martha know why. Tiny Rascal Saurus says, not the asshole, and give them an ultimatum. They pay, or destruction of property is reported to the police. In a lot of places, 700 bucks is in the felony range. Hopefully that will drive home the seriousness of the crime. Your stepdaughter acted out of spite and needs to face consequences. Especially considering, if I read correctly, that stepdaughter is still bringing up having her daughter postpone her wedding as a solution to the ruined dress. That doesn't exactly sound like the suggestion of someone feeling remorse. I would give stepdaughter a week to come up with the $700, and if she doesn't, it's time to involve the police. That sounds like the actual plan, not remorse. The plan was to do literally anything to force a postponement so she could get married first. As if it would make more sense to lose all your deposits and rearrange every plan instead of just buying a new dress. She might not get the dress of her dreams, and depending on how close they are to the date, she might not be able to get all the alterations she would want, but it is still better to go with a different dress than to cancel everything. Am I the asshole? Neighbor says I'm making them uncomfortable being around their kids. I, 40 male, live in a somewhat rural place. Decent land between houses and a lot of forest. In between me and my neighbor's land, there's a decent sized pond. Technically it's all on my land, but one side of it is surrounded by neighbor land. 
There's a dock on it, and I upgraded it about 15 years ago, so it's somewhat nice. It's right next to the property boundary if that's important. So I go down there somewhat often. I'm usually down there for a few hours in the evening with my dog, my work computer, and sometimes a drink. My neighbors are in their late 20s and early 30s. They moved in a few years ago. They've got a pair of young kids, both under 10. I guess maybe 5 to 6 and 8 to 9. Their backyard is not far from where I am in the evening, and neither yard is fenced in. Every few days the kids come outside when I'm down by the pond. I ignore them. But about a week ago, my neighbors approached me and asked if I would go inside or somewhere else when their kids were outside. They said I made them feel uncomfortable letting their kids go in the backyard and that their kids are also scared of my dog. I do not pay any attention to their kids. I usually am facing away from them and never directly facing them. I do get why they would not want their kids outside alone with me nearby as much as it sucks. Because this seems to have been misunderstood, I'm not on any registry, nor do I have any criminal history. However, I do get that they may feel uneasy about their kids being around a man that they do not know very well. My dog is always tied up when he's on the dock with me. He never barks when we're down there, and usually he just naps. He's a fairly large dog, 75 to 80 pounds, but there's almost no chance he could or would hurt them. They also expressed concern about me drinking. I don't get anywhere near the point of being intoxicated. It's at most one drink when I do have it, and I have it maybe a couple times a month. I told them that I appreciate them reaching out to me, but I'm not going to stop. This week I kept doing it, and I got a somewhat angry letter. I'm honestly starting to doubt if I should just head inside when they come out. Am I the asshole for not listening to them, and would I be the asshole if I kept doing what I'm doing? And edit... The pond is basically inaccessible from everywhere except the dock due to plants, so there's almost no chance the kids could fall in. Nah, I don't buy that. I really think that these parents are being unreasonable. Maybe they're just choosing not to have a mano a mano chat with OP and see what the reality of the situation is. I get that they need to put the needs of their kids first, and in this case, maybe them putting up a fence would be the right thing for them to do to protect their kids. It's not up to OP to not use their land that they bought. OP shouldn't be the one changing their habits to suit the two kids. If anything, you know, it's safer that he's out there so the kids, if they do get injured, he can be there to help in the times that he's outside. Because from what I'm seeing, the parents aren't going out there to assess the situation. To me, it looks like they're working off of assumptions. And that's my assumption, and I guess I'm making an ass out of all of us saying that. And OP says at the end that the pond is inaccessible from everywhere except the dock. I think with kids this age, if there's a will, there's a way for sure. And that is one way for the kids to get seriously injured or who knows what's going to happen in that event. Obviously, someone has to change in this situation, and I don't think that's OP's job. I don't think what they're doing is morally wrong, so I don't think they're an asshole. I think it's a bit of an asshole request from the parents to say that, so I think they are. Therefore, I'm going to say not the asshole. Now in the comments, Illustrious Band 537 says, Not the asshole. If they send another nasty letter, get a solicitor to send a cease and desist letter. They are harassing you and trying to dictate what you do on your own land. Unreal. I don't understand how they're mad at you for quietly using your own property. It's bonkers. As a mum of a youngish kids, it's important to teach the kids to be good neighbours too by letting them play quietly and do their own thing without interrupting your joy of using your own property. Sadly, it's likely due to OP being a man. People like to assume that all men are going to creep on their kids, whether said man is doing anything to warrant that or not. No, OP, you are not the asshole. They're just pricks, and need to remember they can't tell you what to do on your own property. I feel like the easy fix for this is a good meet and greet lunch or something. Show he's a normal dude who likes the outdoors, show that his dog is actually just a sweetie who's tied up, and have the kids, and parents really, practice their needed people skills. Not saying he's in the wrong, and the family could totally not go for that, but that's the nicest way to fix this and have a good relationship with your neighbours. People here are too concerned with, they are the asshole, so you don't have to be nice, 
when sometimes it's better to try to make pleasant. You were stuck with these neighbors for a while, at least try to make nice. Yeah, but they came up to him and basically accused him of being a potential predator. I don't know how many people would respond well to that first impression. Maybe it's an easy fix, but it could just as easily backfire. Oh, why does this man want to get to know us better? To manipulate our perception of him? They already started off thinking he was a creep. Any scientist 7467 says, not the asshole, provide them with the names of good fence contractors. The entitled nerve of some people. That is your land. You have the right to peaceful enjoyment of it. If they don't like it, too bad. They can sell their home, stay inside, and build a tall privacy fence. What they can't do is tell you what to do. I agree. Good fences make good neighbours. Unexposed is by user UpperParty8507, titled, Am I the asshole for telling my boyfriend he was ugly and disgusting to look at? So my, 25 female, boyfriend, 27 male and I, have been dating for 8 months. When we started dating, I was putting makeup on every day, and I fall asleep sometimes with it still on my face, so my skin wasn't in the best state. I realised that I wasn't doing it for myself, but for the others, and that I was scared of going out without makeup. I decided to slowly stop putting makeup on and appreciate my natural face. I started using skincare products and also started doing sport and eating healthy food, which helped me feel confident. My boyfriend is a bit different. He has a more sedentary lifestyle and eats mostly fast food or highly processed foods. He's a bit overweight. I try to get him to take walks with me or to cook for him, but he always refuses. Recently, he started making comments on my appearance, such as, You looked prettier without makeup. You're letting yourself go. Or, suggesting that he could get any girl he wanted so that I should put more effort into pleasing him. Yesterday, I was getting ready for the day, and he went behind me and asked if I was really going out like that. I asked him what he meant, and he answered without makeup. Sick of hearing those comments, I snapped. I told him that he was ugly, always eating crappy food, and that he was disgusting to look at, and that maybe I wasn't putting on makeup, but that I was doing something fulfilling with my life, which he was not. He looked shocked and went into another room without saying anything. Since I said this, he's giving me the silent treatment, and I'm wondering if I'm the asshole for what I said. I asked my friends for their opinions, and some thought that I was right, but some thought I was too harsh on him. Am I the asshole? Now in the comments, Outrageous Ad says, Everyone sucks here. You've only been dating for 8 months and apparently you're no longer attracted to each other. And now you're just being cruel to each other. I'd say this relationship has played itself out. Move on. It's really important that you make a distinction between defensive behaviour and cruel behaviour. What she said was bad, but he was trying to tear down her self-esteem for a while. When you equate actions of someone bullying you to your retaliation to it, you make people afraid to stand up for themselves in general. I agree she needs to break up, and that relationship sounds unfulfilling overall. But I do want to make the distinction for OP. He was cruel, and she snapped in response. I called my ex some names after he was verbally abusing me for months, and comments like this absolutely made me think that I deserved the abuse for being angry at him in response. Eventually, I felt that I was as cruel as he was when I eventually snapped, but that wasn't true or fair. If I was told that being angry and snapping in response to abuse was normal and okay, I likely would have had less self-hatred and blame, which means I could have left sooner. The two are not the same. Edit. Maybe this wasn't the best comment to say this in response to, because you seem really nice as I saw your other comment. But I'm going to leave it up, because I feel like this needs to be said in general for folks who genuinely believe lashing out makes you as bad as the abusive person. I absolutely agree with what you said, but I want to point out that I think stating that OP is also being an asshole here isn't necessarily a bad thing when it comes to relationships. A lot of times, toxic relationships can turn us into people we don't recognise. I think that's what's happened to OP here. She said something that she probably would never say, because her asshole boyfriend treats her like trash. 
and in turn, he's making her act like him in defense. Recognizing that we've become someone we don't like because of how a person treats us is, I believe, a big step in realizing that we need to leave. For example, I had a boyfriend back in the day who constantly was flirting with others and cheated on me. I became obsessed with checking his phone, knowing where he was at, etc. because I was terrified of him cheating on me again. Once we finally broke up, I realized how much I hated the person I had become due to his actions, and how I allowed myself to stay in that relationship and be treated that way. Basically realizing that I was pathetic at the time kicked my ass into being better, cutting out toxic relationships, both romantic and otherwise, and being a hell of a lot happier. Cruel people can make us become assholes in turn, and recognizing that allows us to leave and become better. This is all to say that I don't think OP is a bad person, just someone who was beaten down and finally hit back. I hope they can see this moment as a sign for them to think about what they need to be a happier person. Annex post is by user Otaku Gay, titled, Am I the asshole for potentially traumatizing my neighbor's children after they kept coming onto my property and trying to get into my house? Me and my now fiancé have lived in this house and neighborhood for a few months now. I have a one-year-old son myself, so I know how kids can be. However, my neighbors have three children, a 9, 12, and 14-year-old. All of them are boys. At first, they weren't too much trouble. I would just see them running around, throwing sticks, riding scooters across the street. But as of recently, they'd started getting a lot closer to my property. This all started with the oldest one throwing various pieces of trash into our yard that my fiancé would continually have to pick up. Then, all three children started digging holes in our yard, banging on the door, and I even caught them trying to lockpick my front door with a bobby pin. This had happened four to five times already. Of course, I brought this up to their mother, who has done little about it. They seem to have very little supervision, and apparently CPS has already been called numerous times because of how often they seem to be left alone. I warned the mother that we have two big dogs, whose sole purpose was to protect against intruders, so if their sons happened to actually get into my house, they would probably end up hurt. I did not want these little children to end up hurt of course, which was why I was warning her. She brushed it off, saying if anything happened to her boys, she would have me promptly arrested and my dogs put down. So, I decided to take matters into my own hands to ensure the safety of these boys. As expected, the oldest one and his brothers were sneaking around my yard again. I waited until they got closer to the front door. When the second youngest opened the door, I said a command to my dogs and they immediately ran out, barking and growling. All the boys screamed and start yelling. They ran and ran all the way until they got to their house, getting wet by the lawn sprinkler on the way. I called my dogs back, they stopped at the end of the lawn like I'd trained them to, and we didn't hear much for a few days. A few days later, their mother and the police came knocking at the door. She said some stuff about how my dogs bit her children and I was a danger to the neighbours. But I showed the security footage from my camera to the police, and it pretty much died down from there. She's still trying to keep the case open, but I feel as if I've done little to no wrong. Her boys don't bother us anymore, and her children aren't hurt and were never going to be. Am I the asshole? And edit, I did tell the police that they were attempting to break into my house. It was obvious from the video too. I just decided not to press charges considering the only reason they're acting like this is because they have a neglectful mother. From your comments, I've decided to do all I can to get those boys out of there. And lol for all of those saying that my dogs are aggressive. Mabel can't sleep unless she chews on her stuffy repeatedly, and Robbie is scared of spoons. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I may be in the wrong here because this may have been taking things too far. I could have talked to the police instead, or told the kids themselves to stay away. Now in the comments, Snoo Drawings 1480 says, Oh my god, you let your trained dogs out into your own yard? What a criminal. And you let them bark at your children. You're just a monster, aren't you? And security footage? So you admit to recording young boys without their knowledge, predator? 
That's obviously sarcasm, not the asshole. I know you will, but definitely keep a close eye on her and your dogs. She might want to take matters into her own hands and hurt your dogs, not the asshole. And yeah, it wouldn't be the first time a doggy was hurt because a neighbor didn't like them. I wouldn't put a pastor to throw poisoned meat into the garden or something. I had a beautiful Norwegian elk hound when I was a kid. She never left our fenced-in backyard, but she would bark if the neighbor got too close to the fence. I came home from school one day to find her in the backyard. She hated being inside when it was cool out, but she was dying with a pool of antifreeze next to her. But considering my parents kept her chained to her doghouse when we were gone, and I know this was the 80s and their rule, I would never leave one of my dogs outside unattended, there's no way she could have gotten into something. Someone purposely poisoned her, but we had no way to prove who it was, although we suspected the neighbours since he never liked my parents. It's horrible what some people will do. Illustrious Band says, not the asshole. They were trespassing and harassing you. Their mother is useless. Now, you should take the footage back to the police and say that you'd like to press charges for breaking and entering, trespassing, etc. No way should those kids get away with it scot-free. And agree, absolutely press charges. These kids are criminal. And it will get worse. It's better to check this behavior before they're tried as adults. Our next post is by user Unordinary Genius, titled, Am I the asshole for getting pissed? My wife missed open enrollments for benefits. So my wife, female 27, carries health insurance for me, male 32, and her through her job. She makes more money and offered to do this so I could afford to continue paying the majority of our bills after getting a job that pays less than the one I used to have. She received notice that her company's open enrollment period was starting three weeks ago, and that it ended yesterday. This morning she told me that she just realized she never did the enrollment, so we're going to be losing our insurance, medical, dental, and vision. Now, here's where I might be the asshole. When she told me, I exploded. I'm on three medications for my mental health that I just can't stop taking, and I was really scared. I got pissed. How could she miss something so important? I handle all of our other bills. I make sure the rent is paid, and I make sure our lights, phone, and internet stay on. How can she miss this when it puts me in a very dangerous health predicament? I screamed at her for just laying in bed crying instead of trying to find a solution. Then I slammed some doors, and I was just generally kind of rude as I got my crap together and left to go help a friend with something I told him that I'd help him with last week. My wife is wonderful and does suffer from ADHD, and it was clear she felt like crap for forgetting, but I couldn't help but be hurt, scared, and angry. So am I the asshole for yelling at her? And edit, because a lot of people are saying that it should just roll over, I am 100% certain that this isn't the case in our situation. She has been at the company a long time, and they've always had this policy. The insurance selections are just for that coverage year, and they do not roll over if you do not renew your selections. Look, I'm going to say that you both screwed up in this situation, and you both need to evaluate what to do from here on out. I don't think you should have erupted like you did at your wife, because it was obvious that that wasn't going to go anywhere. She also sucks for delaying this by three weeks and missing it, and with the way the healthcare system is set up in America, that can be a death sentence in some cases. So I can see why you're as angry as you are, but in this situation, I don't think it was the right choice. That choice being your actions and how you took this out on your wife and your house. She's also to blame in this situation for just sitting in bed and crying and not trying to help you out when she's the one that got you in this position in the first place. That is a lot of mess, and I'm just going to say everyone sucks here, and I hope you figure this one out. Now in the comments, Verminous Bow says, Everyone sucks here. You reacted horribly and screamed at your wife. That is not okay. She made a mistake and didn't deserve that sort of reaction. You're allowed to be upset but not like that. You can feel whatever you need to feel, but you can't use it as an excuse to treat people terribly. Breathe. Figure out your insurance options and see what you can do about your medication in the meantime. 
GoodRx can help you save money on your prescriptions, either directly or by giving you coupons to your local pharmacies. This is a scary situation, and I feel for you. But yelling at your wife is not going to solve anything. GoodRx is useless if there's no generic version of the drug he's using. If not, this is a very serious problem considering he's on three medications. I think you can get on marketplace insurance when there's a life change such as losing your company insurance, or during their enrollment period. So the first thing to do is talk to the company to see if there's any exception. The second thing is to look into other insurance options. The third is to spec it out out of pocket with whatever programs are available. The market wasn't designed for people who have affordable health insurance available through their employer. They won't be eligible for any subsidies. Not the asshole. The people here who are saying everyone sucks are just willfully ignoring how huge of a deal this is to suddenly not have health insurance. His reaction was completely normal for the level of her F up. Forget his medication. If either of them get into a serious accident during the gap in coverage, their lives could be ruined. Yes, I don't see how you can expect someone to just calmly sit down and speak it through as if she just forgot to schedule his appointment with the hairdresser. At least in that moment, it seemed to him as if he won't be able to afford his medication that he needs because it was too much for her to write an email. Not having health insurance is an effing scary situation. Plus, he already has mental health issues that are willfully ignored just to paint a picture of the male abuser. When she fails to write an email, it's just her having ADHD. When someone with mental health issues screams in panic at the person who robbed them of their access to healthcare, it's abuse. Sure. Plus, the fact that he does basically all life management for them. I would be wildly upset in this instance too. Sure, he yelled and reacted extremely emotionally, and that's not great, but it's an emotional and scary situation to be in, without needed insurance. Also, if her workplace is like mine, they send out multiple reminders, and it's mentioned on every team call. I had a direct report that I knew who always waited until the very last minute, coordinating with his ex on who was taking the kids that year, which made me very nervous for him. So I'd also double check that he had been in communication with her when it opened, and that he actually completed it. It is a huge thing to miss out on because of all the extra work it will entail to obtain coverage and cost them a lot more money for probably worse coverage. Not the asshole. She screwed up big time. You were scared and vulnerable. It's only human for you to lose your senses for a moment. In an ideal world, you would have kept your cool and you should always try not to freak out. Seeing that you question your behavior already, I think you calmed down and are trying to resolve this as calmly as possible. And edit, I'd like to see all the people sitting on their high horses. You should never scream. If they found themselves in a position where their partner just screwed up their access to healthcare, especially when they're already in need of medication. Demanding calmness in such a situation is just delusional. He yelled at her in a panic because she effing jeopardized his health. That is not abuse. It is a human reaction. Alright, just ninja edits. I will revert my opinion that I gave earlier, but I'm not going to completely remove it, as I realized I didn't know enough about the American healthcare system and the way that this works. Oh my god, it is much worse than I originally thought. Now I'm on the not the asshole commenter's side. That is terrible. Am I the asshole because I didn't let my daughter skip a grade? My kids are Jonah, 14 male, and Emma, 12 female, and my husband is Johnny, 40 male, for clarity. Emma has always been brighter than is typical for her age. She was reading at 4 years old, and she's even gone to national competitions. We are really proud of her and all she's accomplishing. She's been in the gifted, talented program for a few years now, but now her school wants to take it further. They want her to go to the 8th grade this year instead of 7th. The thing is though, Jonah repeated a year, the 6th, so he actually is in the 8th grade. It was a hard year for him overall. He's a bit ashamed of that year, and it really bothers him that he didn't put in more effort. I don't think it would be good for him if he and Emma share classes, which is very likely because it's a small school. So I declined the skipping grades arrangement and asked if we can just give Emma further enrichment like we've been doing, because she can definitely do 8th grade work. 
I thought that would be the best for both kids. The trouble is that when I told Emma what we decided for her, she didn't take it well. She soon grew testy, saying that Jonah's school placement has nothing to do with her. I told her that I was thinking of both of them when I made that decision. Emma later went to her room in tears, but she wouldn't let me check on her all evening. Johnny sided with me, saying that it was right that I took both kids into account, but Emma is clearly still bothered, and I really didn't want to upset her. I just wanted to be fair to everyone. Am I the asshole? I think you and Johnny need a reality check and realize that Emma was correct when she said it has nothing to do with her. You really are blindsided by your son having to stay back a grade because he didn't put enough work in, yet that is enough reason to keep her back because she's putting too much work in or she has the ability to put much more work in and skip a grade? If this is what Emma wants and it's what the school is recommending, it is for the best for Emma. You guys are intentionally holding your daughter back in order to appease the feelings of your son. That's not cool. You're definitely the asshole for doing that. Now in the comments, Effective Par 3 says, Your son isn't doing well in school because he didn't put in the effort. And you're holding your daughter back because she's younger and if she caught up it would embarrass him? Let me think. Wow, that didn't take long. You're the asshole. This exactly. Where in the decision did OP think about what was best for Emma? It's obviously best for Emma that she doesn't embarrass her brother. <laughs> Sarcasm, by the way. And you didn't even ask Emma before you decided for her and declined? That's awful. You're the asshole, OP. Here's the thing. I was the kid who wasn't given the opportunity to skip grades because my parents didn't want to embarrass a sibling. Because I was expected to work at a level for my grade, I was frequently accused of cheating as I was working off what I knew rather than what was expected from me. Will it suck for your son? Probably. But you're hindering your daughter's growth to preserve his ego and give him his way. And that reeks of subconscious favoritism. Get your kiddo into therapy to help him handle his shortcomings instead of expecting your other child to handle the aftermath of it. Look... While I totally agree with your comment, as someone who was allowed to skip grades, two of them, including seventh, it was the worst thing my parents ever did for me. I handled myself just fine academically, but emotionally at 12 years old, I couldn't really hang out with 14 year olds, and they either bullied me or peer pressured me into doing things I wasn't comfortable with. The grass is always greener, I suppose. That's valid. I can understand that kind of emotional issue, potentially. I'm working specifically off of OP saying that she decided against it because she doesn't think that it'd be good for her son, not the child that would be jumping a grade. If she had made this choice based off whether or not her daughter was ready, that would be where I sit as well. I feel this way too. Making good decisions for bad reasons doesn't lead to good outcomes. Our next post is by user 57996A4333 titled, Am I the asshole for revealing to my wife's family we didn't purchase our house because it was inherited from my mother? To start, I want to mention that my wife and my mother, deceased, never had a very strong relationship. Yes, they were cordial to each other, but had many disagreements. Mum passed away and left me a one-story house as my only inheritance. No one lived in it after she renovated it, so it looked fairly new. My wife was happy and excited when we moved in. She posted a video on social media and wrote that the house was bought with our money. I didn't know about her saying that until later. Her aunt was visiting from a distance to see the house my wife told her that we purchased. We sat to eat and chat for a bit, and her aunt brought up the house's value, asking how we could afford to buy it so suddenly. I was confused as my wife went on about putting money that we saved together towards buying it. I asked what she was talking about, and her aunt said that my wife told her the house was bought with our money and cost XXX amount. I corrected her, saying that this wasn't true because this house belonged to my mom, and she gave it to me after her passing. And I added that no, we are not doing well financially to be able to afford this house. The room went radio silent. My wife's aunt said, what? I'm sorry, I didn't know that. My wife's cousin side-eyed her and said, so isn't this mother-in-law the same mother-in-law you hated for years? 
Shame she's not here so you can thank her for leaving you this nice house. My wife was stunned at this point and excused herself to the bathroom. She didn't come out till they left. Then she blew up at me asking why I told them the house was inherited from my mum and making her look like a liar in front of them. I redirected the question at her and asked why she told them otherwise. She said there was no harm in showing off our new property and that people will appreciate us more for saying that we bought it with our own money instead of inherited it. I argued that this was wrong and unfair for my mum even if they never got along. She argued that I ruined her joy and humiliated her in front of her family, and because word got out, now everyone knows and will think that she's a liar when I could have simply played along since my mum wouldn't mind it or cause an issue over it now that she's deceased, so it won't matter to her. I stormed out after arguing with her and refusing to admit that I messed up by not being a part of the lie. Am I the asshole? No! What kind of question is that? That is so stupid from her part. How did she just decide that this was an okay thing to lie about? I get that it makes her feel good and it's probably cool in her eyes, but in the world of reality, no. How dumb can you be to think that your husband will just go along with this when you didn't fill him in on the situation? At least try and get him on your side before your aunt comes over and exposes your lie. I just don't understand the stupidity of some people. How can you be this dumb and not think this through, man? She deserves to be caught out on her lie. That was just nonsense. It didn't even need to exist in the first place. Not the asshole, OP. Now in the comments, Messi Aurora says, quote, made her look like a liar. You didn't make her look like one. Her own behavior made her a liar. Not the asshole. Well, I ain't calling her a truther. Not the asshole. She ain't no truther. She's the sole reason she feels bad. She's lucky to have an honest husband. She didn't tell you her story, meaning she knew that you wouldn't like it. She should have been honest with you instead of expecting you to lie. Also, I feel that it's not considerate or equal that she dismissed what you and your family was able to offer her and instead take the credit. Disrespectful and manipulative. I hope she can come to her senses and take accountability for her actions. Not the asshole. Your wife is a liar and should have never said that. Give credit where credit is due. Your mum deserves the credit, plain and simple. Plus, it sounds like she was bad-mouthing your mum more than you know. The way the aunt said, oh, the woman you hated? Definitely not the asshole. Cousin said that, not the aunt, but yeah, not the asshole. Lol, the way the cousin piped up with what everyone was thinking. I love that kind of chaos. Abby Burb says, not the asshole. She called you a liar? You were not the one who lied here. You did not know that she'd made up this act. How could you play along? And why would you? This is completely disrespectful to your mother and her memory. Regardless if they got along or not, you don't have to like someone to be respectful. You did not make her look like a liar or humiliate her. She made herself rightfully look like a liar and humiliated herself. She should not be upset with you at all. She should be upset with herself. She owes you and your family a huge apology. Yup. She hated her mother-in-law and then tried to take credit for a gift from mother-in-law. Bet you that if they were to get divorced, she'd do everything she could to get 50% of the house that was left from the woman she hated. Annex post is by user throwra283827. Titled, Am I the asshole for being upset about my sister taking away her room for my children? Long time lurker, I apologize if I miss any information. My sister has always been super close to my children. 14 female, 10 female, and 8 male. She's been looking after them since she was in grade 10, so when she was 15, and when my middle child was 1. It started off as 2 weeks a month after school, And then she basically moved in with me until she was 18 and found her own place. When she was 20, she moved into a two-bedroom place and converted the second room into my children's bedroom. They came around hers every other weekend and some school holidays. The children are extremely close to her. They mistakenly refer to her as mummy sometimes, so maybe I should be more grateful about this situation. She lives in a three-bedroom place with her wife, She's a teacher, and her girlfriend is a hairdresser, if that's at all relevant. 
We were recently told that they're in the process of adoption. There is no child lined up yet, but they're hoping it'll be soon, and obviously I'm happy for my sister because she's so good with children, and she's been nothing but supportive of me and my children. My middle child was talking about how excited she was to babysit the baby and have sleepovers with said baby. My sister texted me, not even to my face, while my daughter was on my phone, which is how they found out that the children's bedroom will be converted into their children's bedroom, and that if anything, they'll get a sofa bed or an air mattress for when the children come to stay. As I said, as reluctant as I am about this, the children do consider my sister as their second mum, and to be pushed away like this because they're wanting a baby? I told her I was upset with this because they have their space, which they're currently using as a room for their rabbit. How could a rabbit be a priority? And it's not like they're babies so they can share rooms with a rabbit. My eldest goes to college in two years, and she was told that she could stay with them while she's completing college. She's messaged them upset and won't tell me what she's said. I said I felt like they were being selfish by pushing my children away for a child they don't even have and not even having the nerve to talk to my children face to face. Sister-in-law messaged my husband, once again not communicating, telling him how I ruined their special news and that it's manipulative, that their future child will take priority and the children may full well be grown up by the time they're even allowed a child. It's all become an issue. My husband is on my sister-in-law's side, but honestly, I'm still upset. They've been there for my children, and the moment they may be getting a baby, my children have been pushed away, and they didn't even have the decency to tell us face to face. Am I the asshole? Yes. Now in the comments, Ozzy Altair says, I fixed it for you. My younger sister was parentified. She continued to look after my children for free when she was an adult. Her life situation changed and now she needs her room in her own house for her priorities. I'm so entitled, I think she should continue to run her life around my children. Am I the asshole? Yes, you're the asshole. You're the asshole. You've parentified this poor woman since she was 15. Let her have her own kids. Yup, and maybe the sister should ask OP which room will the child have in OP's room. And then how many days a month will OP be taking to have the new child? Entitled much? You're the asshole. Beyond parentified though. This is like a child custody schedule she built with her sister. Every other weekend and then some? Kids even called her mum sometimes? It makes me wonder what kind of mum that OP is. That this was the setup she created. Did she want kids and why did they spend so much time there? Why were her kids so emotionally invested in her sister that they call her mummy sometimes? You're the asshole. Her house, her life. You should be personally paying to redecorate it, throwing her a baby shower and then some after using her for like 15 years and not paying her a dime. She also fed them for a significant chunk of the year, invested many hours and likely doted on them. Will you be taking her child every other weekend? Will you have a room for her child? I bet not, since you didn't even want yours around. Our next post is by user Habibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibib
far outweighs the reward in this situation. And this is on his bad parenting, absolutely. If this isn't a spur of the moment where both kids just randomly decide not to wear seatbelts, but this is in fact, you know, a common behavior that they continue to show, then absolutely the father and the parenting style is to blame. I can't blame OP for putting their own priorities first, so I'm gonna say not the asshole. Now in the comments, Curiouser and Curiouser1 says, not the asshole. The missed flight is definitely on his kids. They are way too old for this to have happened. Not the asshole. How do you have that kind of patience? Anyone taking more than a few minutes to put their seatbelt on wouldn't be going anywhere in my car, ever. If I get into a car, I even ask the driver to wait until my seatbelt is on before they start to drive. It just takes one idiot ramming into you while you're still parked for you to get seriously hurt. Putting the seatbelt on should always be the first thing after your butt touches the seat. I just don't put the car in gear until everyone is buckled in. Fortunately, all my friends are smart, and I only have one passenger seat, so it's not much to police. My car doesn't even start until everyone's buckled in. I'm not wasting gas on stupid. Lol, not the asshole. What a couple of punks. You did the right thing. You could have gotten in trouble or endangered their lives. And would your brother have paid your ticket? Of course not. Would he be pissed at you if they got injured in the car? Of course he would. And also, he's a huge asshole for not making them wear their seatbelts regularly. And even if the brother paid the fine, it would be showing on OP's record. And that's not even the worst that could happen. What if they were in an accident and the kids didn't have their safety belts on? The kid's father is lucky to not have CPS called on his dumb ass. How incredibly reckless. Not the asshole. the kids were being brats, also known as little assholes, and their dad is the asshole. They most definitely need to wear their seatbelts. Their dad never enforcing that is an issue, and then missing their flight is the consequence of that. Besides, you were the responsible adult in this situation. You weren't doing anything to put them in danger, just the opposite. They were under your care and needed to follow your rules. Hopefully they learned a lesson here. And our next post is by user Cat Woes Throwaway, titled "Am I the Asshole for Kicking My Boyfriend Out Over My Cat?" For context, my 24 female boyfriend, 30 male, and I recently moved in together. It's something we've been talking about, and when his lease ended, he moved into my apartment. I have a cat, Millie, who is my baby girl that I've had since she was a kitten. Back when my boyfriend and I first started dating, he made the joke that if we were going to live together, he'd have to get rid of that cat, which I dismissed at the time. When he would come over, he would ignore Millie, making jokes about how cats are stuck up and how much he's a dog person. Again, I dismissed this because he never acted hostile towards her. I figured it was just a preference. When we started to get serious about moving in, he asked if I would consider giving her away because he didn't like the idea of living with a cat. I almost laughed before realizing he was serious. I told him that under no circumstances would I get rid of my cat. I felt guilty about being unwilling to compromise, but he actually took it well and reassured me that if she was this important to me, he would get over it. Fast forward to last night, I don't think he realized I was in the kitchen when he came home. Millie was on the couch and I heard him go into the room and give this sigh. Before I could call out, I heard him say, Ah, you're so effing worthless. It terrified me, because I've never ever heard him speak with such malice. He sounded like a different person. It was just so cold and hostile that I panicked and rushed out there to see him looking at Millie. Here is where I might be the asshole. I completely freaked out. I was yelling and asking what he thought he was doing talking to her like that. He jumped and I scooped Millie up and told him to leave my apartment right now. He looked so stunned and started to argue, asking where was he supposed to go. I told him that I don't care, he just needs to leave. He was pissed and said that he was going for a drive and slammed the door behind him. I immediately started sobbing and holding Millie. I was shaking, and she could tell that I was upset and kept cuddling me. 
She calmed me down, and later when he texted asking if he could come back, I said yes. I then put Millie in the bedroom so we could talk. We were both a lot calmer, and I felt awful after he explained his side. I'll often call Millie little names, and he said he was just trying to be playfully mean too, and misjudged his tone. But he said that it felt awful that I chose a cat over him, and that I called it my apartment when it's supposed to be our place. He told me he was constantly feeling second best to Millie, who I wouldn't even consider rehoming, and I had thrown him out over an animal when he's a person. I explained to him how much he means to me, and I apologized for ever making him feel like this wasn't his home. I think I might have overreacted, but I just don't know. He's my boyfriend, and she's something I keep refusing to compromise on, but I also don't believe that he just misjudged his tone. Am I the asshole? Look, I'm going to say you're not the asshole for your actions here, kicking him out of your place. I feel like you know him best out of all of us. And if you really believe his story, then fair enough. But the way you're writing this, it makes it seem like he just wants to get rid of the cat. He really doesn't care. And he's gotten back into the apartment. Now he's going to manipulate you and be like, Oh my god, you care about the cat more than me. You don't actually love me, do you? This isn't even my house. You're overreacting, it's just a cat. Look, you'd rather kick me out over the cat? What's the point of even having a cat in the first place? I'm just going off of what you're writing here, OP. I'm going to say that it's very suggestive, and it suggests that he's being manipulative and abusive. That's all I can say. I'm going to say you're not the asshole, but tread carefully. Now in the comments, Science Not Kids says, Not the asshole, and he's lying now. Don't let him gaslight you. Your cat is going to go missing someday. This, 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 this. If for some reason you do continue this, make sure you have plenty of photographs of her and you as proof that she is yours and that she's microchipped because she will end up on the streets or dropped off at a shelter. All of this. I work at a shelter and I've seen multiple cats returned by the significant other of the original adopter. We always take the cat and then contact the actual owner to make sure it was actually their choice. A few times, this kind of situation did end a relationship, but the cats got to be back with their owners. We even had a recent incident with a cat who was found on the street and ended up with us, and the owner saw her online and scheduled a time to come collect her, but then never showed up. When we called the owner to check up, she said her boyfriend didn't want the cat back, so we could just keep her. Please, please, do not feel like a bad person for valuing your cat's safety over your boyfriend. He's a whole adult, capable of taking care of himself. You are her whole world, and she needs you in her corner. I won't say rehoming a cat is always bad, as often, it can be for the cat's own good. But in this case, I would worry that this whole situation is him testing your boundaries, and nothing good ever comes from giving in to boundary pushes. Am I the asshole for telling my son that I don't care that he's gay? I, female 32, have three kids, who for the sake of this I'll call Jack, Paige, and Chloe. I have them with my ex-husband and we remained on good terms. A few weeks ago, I was hosting a family dinner with my little sister and older brother and their kids. And I spent all day cooking a magnificent meal, asking my kids to entertain themselves so I could have full attention to making sure that nothing went wrong, and as I'm cooking, Jack comes in and tells me he has something to say. Which I ask very kindly if he could wait until a bit later, as I don't need the food burning. But he was adamant to talk to me now, so I allowed him to while I made the food. He tells me he's gay, and me being stressed... I told him it's not a big deal and that I don't really care. Growing up in a very backhanded racist and anti-LGBTQ family and not following those beliefs, I raised kids to know that everyone is an equal no matter what, and so if needed, I didn't want them to come out to me unless they were trans, so that I could support them in transitioning. He looks at me, completely shocked, and then starts going off at me that I should be making a big deal out of this, because it took him a lot of courage for him to come out, to which I then remind him that he doesn't need to come out, and that I love him no matter what. He goes bat crap and storms upstairs to pack a bag and head to his dad's, 
in which he tells him what happened and I get a call from my ex, and he says he agrees with me and that he'll talk to Jack. The family come over and I confide in them about what happened as my sister also agrees with me. However, my brother does not. He says that coming out is a big deal and I should have told him that I'm proud that he did come out, but I honestly believe that being a part of the LGBTQ community isn't a big deal. It's just your preference in who you date. This just feels so weird to me. Like, I know it's not a huge deal to you, but do you not see it from his perspective that it is a very big deal for him? And regardless of your feelings about how you want him to come out and how, you know, it doesn't matter if he tells you or not, he's the same person, you need to treat him with a big level of respect here. The way you're treating this shows a, a big lack of respect and a being unaware of his emotions and how he's feeling at the time. He's still very young and emotionally volatile, I would imagine, as I was at that age. And by the looks of it, he really didn't take this one well because you handled this so terribly. So I'm going to say that you're the asshole for this one. I think you need to apologize. Now in the comments, Unapproved Denty says, You're the asshole. After much debate, I'm going with unintentionally the asshole instead of no assholes here. Being gay shouldn't be a big deal, and your son shouldn't have to feel like coming out is a huge thing to be proud of. I think your reaction, while not what he wanted, was fine, because you shouldn't care that he's gay. Honestly, I wish coming out didn't have to be a thing, and people were able to be who they are without judgement. However, it is a big deal to your son, and you need to have a proper discussion with him and apologise for your reaction, as it hurt him, even if unintentional. And editing, because my comment is blown up for some reason, yes, I'm reading through all the replies, I am learning a lot. Again, this was my initial opinion on the situation. I'm not saying I'm right, and my opinion does not invalidate what OP's son is feeling, and I think OP should have a discussion with their son. I definitely am taking on board all the comments that are posted. Theory Attic replies to that and says, First off, I want to point out that Opie is the asshole for outing her son to the rest of the family by telling them what happened without her son's consent. While I agree that it shouldn't be a big deal, it very much is if you were scared or anxious about coming out to everyone, which is why he did it in private. That was his news to share not OPs, and I bet that's just going to hurt her son even more when he finds out. Also, even though OP recovered by saying I'll always love you, saying I don't care is invalidating to the anxiety and internal struggle that he probably had to overcome to come out to her. So it's not no assholes here, but you're the asshole in my opinion. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. I can respect the points you made, but OP didn't care so much. She took something emotionally important to her son, and pretty much said, whatever. It comes off as really apathetic to something that is usually a big deal for the LGBTQ community. Also, to all the people calling him attention-seeking, if he was so attention-seeking, then a more supportive scenario to your argument was if he would have done it at dinner rather than in private. Yeah, he may have wanted attention, but the attention he wanted was validation and support from his mother, understanding how she is happy that he could come out to her, but instead was met with dismissal and I don't care. Superstar32131 says, Sorry, but you're the asshole for two reasons. First, it's not a preference as you state in your last sentence. Second, it would have taken you zero effort to give him a hug and say that you're proud of him. Then tell him you want to have a bigger conversation about it later on, when things are not as hectic. This. My three-year-old ran to me yesterday all excited that she pooed on the potty instead of her underwear. She did the same thing two days ago. It wasn't a big deal to me, but it was to her. So I made a big deal about it and told her that I was proud of her. Pooping on the potty and coming out as gay are obviously different categories, but my point is... When your kid comes to you looking for support and encouragement, you give it. It reinforces honesty and openness. 
Unexposed is by user, not a green thumb, am I the asshole? Titled, Am I the asshole for removing tree roots from my yard? My family and I moved into a new home this spring. We had previously lived in apartments, and now we have our first yard for our kids to play in. The neighbourhood we moved into has a lot of mature trees, and this being the first time I've had to do my own yard work, there has been a learning curve. One of my neighbour's yards is separated from ours by a chain link fence. There is a large tree just on their side of the fence. Some roots from the tree spread into my yard and some of them are growing on the surface of the ground. They are visible and above the ground quite a bit. About a month ago, my kids were running around and playing, and my daughter tripped on one of the roots, fell, and ended up breaking her wrist trying to catch herself. Of course, this was very upsetting to my wife and I, and she pretty much told me to do something about the roots so this didn't happen again. So I bought some tools and started tearing the roots up as best I could. I got them out to a point that nothing is sticking above the ground anymore and filled the top in with fresh soil and grass seed. My neighbour must have noticed the work I did because he made a comment about the fresh soil. So I told him that I had to remove some roots since my daughter tripped on one. He asked what I meant by remove and I told him I dug a bunch out and cut them out as best as I could. He got pissed and told me I probably killed his tree. I told him that removing a few roots isn't going to hurt a tree that big, and they were creating a tripping hazard. And since they were in my yard, I did what I needed to do to remove them. He told me there are other ways to deal with roots like that instead of cutting them out and causing stress to the tree, and he would have gladly helped if I had asked. He said that tree is probably going to die, which means it probably is going to have to be removed, and said that a tree that large is going to cost thousands of dollars to take out. I told him that sounds ridiculously expensive. He said if the tree dies and has to have it cut down, he's going to ask me to pay for some of it because of what I did to the roots. I told him good luck with that, and that I'm not paying for anything for his tree. He called me an asshole and told me the previous neighbours at least had the decency to ask for help when they didn't know what the hell they were doing, instead of causing damage to other people's property. I told my wife about it and she thinks the guy is just being a jerk and agrees with me that taking a few roots from the top of the ground isn't going to hurt a tree that big. She also agrees that there is no way in hell we're going to pay for anything for this guy's tree. We were just making sure our yard is safe for our kids to play in. It's not our fault his tree grew roots into our yard. Alright class, I'd like you to turn your books to the page about tree law. These people don't seem to be too well versed in what tree law is and just how much they're going to be put on the spot for should this tree die. If it were me in this situation, I definitely would have gone and asked the neighbour about it because after knowing just how much these trees cost and what you can be up for, I'd be like, yo, let's, let's do a really amicable transaction here, right? It's going to be equal on both parts. My daughter's broken her wrist and I don't want to pay you thousands of dollars for this. You definitely did the wrong thing here, OP, morally and legally, in my opinion. It was destruction of property, even though it was on your side, it is going to cause destruction on his side now, as a result of your careless and reckless actions. I think you're an asshole for doing that, and you should probably go apologize and seek a workaround or something that's not going to land you in court with this guy. You're the asshole. Now in the comments, Copper Anode says, You're the asshole. You should have told him what you were doing since it is his tree. Yes, even though the roots were on your side of the fence, it is the neighbourly thing to do. And speaking as someone with a fair amount of experience with plants, depending on what kind of roots you hacked, how many there were, and what you did to the open wounds before covering with dirt, there is a chance you could kill the tree. Can you imagine if the tree did die and then fell on the neighbour's house? That would be on OP. OP, don't go cutting other people's roots unless you're qualified. Your neighbour should sue you, and I think they have a good chance at winning. A little communication would have gone a long way here. You're the asshole. Luckstrict6000 says, Yes, it is your property, but you really should have, at the least, talked to your neighbour first to come up with a solution. It does cost thousands of dollars to remove big trees. You had to know that ripping out roots would hurt the tree. You're the asshole. 
Fun fact, in many areas, if OP's actions killed the tree, he can be held responsible for not only the cost of removing the tree, but also for the value of said tree. And mature trees can be incredibly valuable, like tens of thousands of dollars valuable. The neighbor sounded totally reasonable in asking just for help covering it. OP clearly has no idea of the value of mature trees or the cost of their removal. Exactly. Just the fact the neighbor said that he would have been happy to help with the issue in a more productive way had OP asked or mentioned there was a problem makes the neighbor not the asshole. I understand your reasoning, OP, and that it likely just came from ignorance and you weren't trying to be an asshole. But unfortunately, in this situation, you're the asshole. Our next post is by user Brax Hecker, titled. Am I the asshole for how I responded to a woman's critique of my favourite authors? I'm a 17-year-old guy, and I love to read. This summer alone, I've read probably a dozen books, and had fun with each of them. I've spent some time at the public library this summer, either to just hang out, as I really enjoy the peace and quiet a library provides, or just to find a new book. Today, I was sitting at one of the tables after picking out Pet Cemetery. That's how the title is spelled, and sat at the table with a pile of other books and began to read, when eventually these two girls came up and asked if they could sit at the table, and I said sure. So they sit for a while and each read their own books while quietly chatting with each other before asking me what I was reading. I told them, and one of them asked, oh, Stephen King, right? And I said yeah, and quickly expressed my love for his work. The other girl pointed to my pile of books and asked what the collections consisted of, and I went through the line. It was a few more King books, J.R.R. Tolkien, George Orwell, and Roald Dahl's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, since I've only ever seen the movie. The second girl snorted and said, so just a bunch of old white dudes? To which they both laughed. I chuckled before saying back jokingly, well, I'm yet to find a female author who's written anything as sophisticated as James and the Giant Peach, before chuckling at my own joke. They both went quiet before the first one said, Did you really just say that? I asked what the problem was, as they quickly packed up to leave. She looked at me and said, You really think women are so incompetent that they can only write children's books? F you. I was a little bewildered, and soon left after them. When I told this story to my friend group's group chat, they all said that they were just psychos and to ignore them, except for a couple of the girls, who said that what I said was actually pretty crappy, and they said I compared the work of women in writing careers to crappy children's books. Now I don't know if what I said was just a misinterpreted joke, or if what I did was actually mean, or if those two just don't know how to take a joke. So Reddit, am I the asshole? And to edit to clarify, my comment was in no way, shape, or form meant maliciously. It was a quickly thought up jab back at them in self defense of my selection of authors. I'm not saying, nor will I ever say, that people can't be good at something because of their gender. As a matter of fact, the book To Kill a Mockingbird is without a doubt my favorite book. Harper Lee's work in that book alone outperforms every single one of those other authors combined, except for 1984. That is an extremely close second. Now in the comments, Timelord42 says, You're the asshole. It was definitely sexist of you. You pretty much said women can't write sophisticated literature. Mary Shelley, Ursula K. Le Guin, and Toni Morrison would all like to have a word with you. Regardless of if it was a joke or not, you should know your audience. A more appropriate response would be to laugh along with them and maybe ask for a recommendation. Right? Mary Shelley's husband was also an author, and no one effing talks about him. I've read and compared their works. He was nowhere near as talented. There's also Elizabeth Barrett Browning, The Brontes, Jane Austen, which is not my cup of tea, but irrefutably a good writer. Emily Dickinson, you know, like there are so many great female writers. If you haven't read a book written by a woman since childhood, and won't read one, you don't hate women as authors, you just hate women. You're the asshole, OP. What the hell? How are you jumping from the comment to hate women's authors to hate women? 
That's some contortion that Cirque du Soleil would be proud of. Someone who didn't know him took a moment in time snapshot of reading material and incorrectly extrapolated a smart-ass comment. OP fired off one back. OP hardly qualifies as an asshole in this, let alone means he hates women authors or women in general. Either no assholes here, or a light you're the asshole. Not in a terrible way, but in a you're 17 years old way. You meant nothing wrong, and you were being jokey, but it stings in a way you can't understand for women to hear someone say their gender is incapable of quality work. And that sting is felt more intensely by teen girls. It is almost impossible to describe to men how the little barbs against women that you probably don't even notice dig into your skin and weigh us down over time. You should have just asked for a recommendation. Maybe they could have given a recommendation instead of just taking a dig. Oh, you like 1984? Maybe check out The Handmaiden's Tale. Is a much more productive way to get kids reading female authors than, lol, white old men. I think this point really starts to get to the heart of the issue. Neither group was capable of having a productive conversation. OP was 17 and likely was grabbing the classics brought up in his English classes, which usually do unfortunately favour the old white men books. The girls could only recognise that the selection of books in the comments hurt them, but were likely unable to vocalise why such a selection is problematic. The beginning stages of feminism and activism in general, where kids and teens can point out problems, but still need to learn how to address it in a productive conversation. It doesn't take an academic knowledge of gender studies to recognise the intense and personal sting of misogyny though. Hey, I see you've got some classics. Some of those authors are pretty basic and kinda problematic though. Would you like some recommendations on even better books? Yeah, sure. I'll probably read these just to avoid FOMO since they are considered classics. But I'd love some other books to read too to expand my horizons. Great. Ursula Le Guin, The Bronte Sisters, Mary Shelley and Octavia Butler are some fantastic authors to start with if you like sci-fi, horror, and literary classics. Cool. Thanks. Our next post is by user BackgroundLow8044, titled, Am I the asshole for being upset my son chose his girlfriend over his family? My son, 23 male, has been dating his girlfriend, 23 female, for two and a half years. She's a nice girl who I think is really good for my son and is always pleasant and polite to us. However, she can be emotional and sensitive, and I worry that my son puts her feelings before his own. Girlfriend was supposed to graduate in May 2020, but never had a graduation ceremony because of the pandemic. I know she was really upset and devastated over the end of her college of experience and no celebration. Recently, she found out that they will be scheduling a graduation ceremony for the 2020 graduates this fall. When girlfriend told my son, he was very excited and told me the news. I told him that the ceremony is the same day as his cousin slash my niece's wedding. His cousin deserves to have her family there to support her. My son and her were close as kids, so she had asked him to do a reading and he had agreed. His girlfriend has met our extended family a few times, but she isn't close with them. When my son told his girlfriend about the wedding, she was very upset and heartbroken. She told him that she needs him there to see her walk the stage, and it was bad enough that it wasn't a typical graduation. Girlfriend and my son talked about skipping the wedding ceremony and going to the reception after girlfriend's graduation is done. My son talked to his cousin, and she said she's okay with him missing the ceremony. I think that his girlfriend is selfish, and I cannot believe that she's making him abandon his family when they aren't even married. I was so angry I didn't talk to my son for a week, and now girlfriend is upset at my reaction as well. Am I the asshole for being mad that he would abandon family for a girlfriend? And edit, I do like his girlfriend. I think she's nice. But I'm worried about how much my son does for her. Every time she's offended or upset by something, he jumps to comfort her and do whatever it is she wants to be happy. Seems like she's always upset about something. I worry he's only going to her graduation because she was upset. You're really making a big deal out of a nothing burger, in all reality. 
The fact that he jumps to help his girlfriend when she's upset is normal and is the sign of a healthy relationship, is it not? You're making it out to be like she's constantly upset and there's always a problem and there's rarely a time where she's ever happy with things. I really bet that you're skewing the situation here, OP. And you say you can't believe she's making him abandon his family when they aren't even married. Again, you're the only one that sees a problem here. The cousin said she was fine with it. It is literally a non-situation. You're the one who chose not to talk to him for a week to punish him, and nothing has changed as a result. You just seem petty and malicious, and I'm gonna say you're the asshole for this one. Now in the comments, Acrobatic Try 3549 says, You're the asshole. The cousin is okay with it. Your son is okay with it. His girlfriend is okay with it too. What is your role in the entire story? None. So cut it out. And edit. Oh, and most people would attend the graduation of a partner over the wedding of a cousin. Yes, you're the asshole. Your son is a grown adult taking care of his business as he sees fit. Mind your own business. Yeah, it sounds like the son made an adult compromise that all the other adults are comfortable with. OP is the only one seeing this as some sort of betrayal or abandonment. Son will be there for both cousin and partner. This sounds more about OP's control issues than anything else. Evil Urges says, You're the asshole. You should be proud that your son found a compromise that satisfied everybody. You should also be proud of him for being sensitive and attentive to his girlfriend's feelings. You somehow raised a good kid despite these short-sighted inclinations that you seem to have. This was the sickest burn I've read all day. Please have my upvote. And to OP, yes, you're the asshole. He's an adult. You need to stop trying to control him. Did y'all read it as, my son is no longer sensitive to all my emotions and now tends to hers too? So Mama Bear wants to assert her dominance. You're the asshole. And that girlfriend might end up a future spouse, so I'd watch it if you plan on giving the silent treatment to your son in the future. I would side-eye the crap out of my spouse's parent doing that crap. Right? Especially if she plans on seeing a lot of her grandchildren. This is the type of mum who doesn't get why she doesn't really get to see her grandchildren or why her children don't visit her as adults. I don't know why my son won't talk to me. But then pulls this stuff. Ah, <sighs> yep, a future Missing Missing Reasons poster in the making. Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below, and make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages, and thank you so much for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.